Welcome to another episode of techtalk.travel. Today's guest is Martin Stockberger from Concept Hotels. Martin, it's great to have you on the show. Thanks for Thanks. joining us. <laughs> Um, let's get started by talking a little bit about your background and um, how you got into hotels and how it is you came to where you are today. Well, actually, that I'm in that industry, that's for a coincidence. So I, my family is not in that business, um, nor is anybody of, of my family in in hospitality industry. So that's really for coincidence. And then I started as, as that's usual here in, in Germany. You do an apprenticeship and you pick your first shop and... Then you move over and after a certain time I, I got to that point that I thought, well, it's an, a really brilliant business and a nice job, but there's something wrong with that hospitality industry. It's more or less following its own ideas and it has forgotten a bit the customer who should be in the middle of everything. What's your background regarding where you've worked and some of the hotels that you've been, um, that you've gathered your experience in? Yeah, well, I, I did an apprenticeship in one of the conservative German hotel operators called Steigenberger. Yes. In that time, that has been a big name. Today, it's um, called Deutsche Hospitality, and mm -hmm. they put away a bit all that glamour and reputation of that brand. Um, then I went uh, abroad, uh, spent a year in Spain and one in uh, Switzerland in order to gather more international experience and then I started with Starwood um, and picked up my first sales position. Mm -hmm. And that led after a couple of years to a German hotel operator that is fairly unknown, um, where I was in charge of sales and marketing for over 10 years, heading that sales and marketing team consisting of, of 17 hotels and some hundred millions revenue. And now you're founder and, and GM of Concept Hotels here in Cologne. <coughs> yeah, Tell we, us a little bit about that. Well, <laughs> the idea is quite quite simple. When I, I spent my, my 10 years with that uh, former employer with whom I, I worked with, um, I had been the only one in the managing board who has been in the 40s. So, and the rest of the, the managing board has been around 60 or right. 65. And then after 10 years, I had to decide whether I want to stay there another 10 years. So everybody of them would be 70 and me would be 50. And I said, no, it's time to, you know, bring it to an end and, and to add for another thing in life. And um, at that point of, of um, my career, I, I did the one thing what always was in sales and marketing in the middle of everything. I put a, a target audience in the center and uh, did an analyze about what is the, the things this target audience really needs. And this is definitely not was the, what the Deutsche Hotel Klassifizierung tells. So it's a completely different uh, expectation that target audience has. So we started with to sinus milieus and um, check their wish and what they are looking for and then we we build up solutions in order to satisfy that wishes that uh, those people have and that brought us to a hotel concept that is on the one hand highly digital yeah. on the other hand really responsible with the uh, the world around, the yeah. globe, the neighborhood, uh, and we, we brought up a quite local concept, what uh, is a kind of an answer to Airbnb. Okay. Oh. Would you consider this particular property a budget property, or what, at what scale, where, where in the scale would you see that it fits? Yeah, well, you already heard I'm a bit bashing the total classifizierung, so I'm not keen on having stars or yeah. a, a certain category. What we sell is more or less a four star price here in Cologne. So right. our average rate is um, uh, slightly above four star branded comp set here in Cologne. Okay. So you could say it's a four star product. If you look around, it's definitely not. Yeah. 
um, but that's a bit how all those successful young brands work. So Aloft, the Marriott brand, does more or less the same ADR as Meridian or Sheraton does. Mm. So mm. it's less a question of hardware, it's more a question about lifestyle and sex appeal of the brand and what is around. Yeah. all that yeah. glamour. Yeah. And just for our viewers, I, I just go over the fact that this is a hotel essentially that runs without s staff. Yeah. Uh, it is run purely on what technology that you've put in place yeah. so that it can be essentially an automated experience for, yeah. for the guests staying here. That means when the guest books the, the hotel, typically through the normal channels or through yeah. direct through your website, they're then given information about how they check themselves in collecting their key, and then checking into the room. Um, how, how has that worked with the guests in terms of their response to that? Is there at times perhaps a funny, or is there any awkwardness from the guests saying, it was weird not having anyone at the hotel when I arrived? Or is it kind of more accepted now? Because as you mentioned Airbnb earlier, it's, that's had an impact on the industry as a whole and, and the expectation perhaps from the traveler yeah. Maybe there is never now, or not always, uh, a front desk reception. Yeah. Well, when we started this concept, we we did it in a very calm and very defensive way. So we did not huge um, communication about how we are running that hotel. So mm -hmm. we explained to our our guests that is a new concept and that they can talk with us at any time, and we gave them the channels in order to make themselves to select which channel they want to use via phone or uh, messenger services or whatsoever. And then um, after a couple of months we, we really knew that it worked and that most of our guests were fine with that. So um, within six months we had been number 20 on TripAdvisor in Cologne out of 300 hotels. Nice, yeah. And um, so we put a lot of mega brands aside and, and really outperformed the market in regards to uh, guest perception. And then we started to communicate a bit more proactively that there's actually no stuff at the hotel. But, um, you know, the, the thing you should have in mind is that those receptionists, they hardly have time to really socialize with the guests. So, um, whenever you're checking into an average four-star property somewhere in the world, you ask your name, then you show your ID, you sign that sheet of paper, and then you go up. And for all that, for that entire process, you have to queue up and wait until the moment comes that this receptionist has time for you. And that's not. Uh, the digital time we are living in. So, um, at that moment when we had been sure that the process really works and is accepted by the guest, we we really kicked off that business strategy in a digital world and explained people that we do not have a huge overhead here on property, but that um, we give the guest back all the flexibility and all the, the own decisions how and when and where they want to do their check-in and check-out and how they want to receive their, their invoice mm -hmm. um, and that we do a lot of good things with the money we save due to the disruptive digital concept we have. Right, right, right. What's your average occupancy? 90% average rate, rate. 90 euros so That's good. that makes a ref par that is yeah sexier yeah. than in a couple of the five-star five star properties here. Definitely, now. definitely. Yeah. And in terms of the actual technology that you're <laughs> using here, um, where, where have you been surprised by what you're using that perhaps worked for you better than you anticipated? Well, you know, hospitality still is a bit laid back in regards to adopting those, let's say, modern technologies the airlines all use those technologies so they send out that mobile boarding passes and you enter a first 
class flight to Hong Kong only with your your yeah. mobile phone. Yeah. Yeah. And in hospitality, hoteliers still are explaining why it doesn't work to do it like that. Mm -hmm. So we really have been surprised that it has been so easy to convince the clientele we address from that technology. So there are a couple of questions. They can call us whenever they want and that also means night. Mm -hmm. There are a couple of questions from time to time from people who do not open their Bluetooth or I don't know, who are not able to access their room because the distance between phone and locking device is too large or so. Mm -hmm. A couple of, of things like that but in general we really have been overwhelmed by the by the capability of, of our guests to manage that system. Mm -hmm. oh, great, great. In terms of the actual technology that you're using here, can you talk us, to tell us what you're actually using for a PMS, uh, the door locking system and any other if, if really important services that uh, help you run yeah. the day to day? Well actually that kind of, of uh, architecture we are using has not been existed before so I really needed a couple of good stakeholders that supported to develop that idea and um, one of those had been the Wi-Fi provider the cloud mm -hmm. who really did invest into our technology that the the app really comes up whenever you open the Wi-Fi browser and all that stuff um, the other partner that has really been um, highly supportive has been Hotel Bird the, who is the leading uh, keyless room entry technology in the market. Mm -hmm. And the other partner that has really been great is Infor. Mm -hmm. So we are using Infor as PMS, um, Hotel Bird as app application and um, the cloud for the Wi-Fi. The locking devices um, had been selected based on a um, recommendation we received but we will change for the next hotels. Okay. So that will not be the partner I would love to recommend for okay. anyone who wants to go into that direction. Okay. Yeah. For, can I ask for, for what reasons? More for functional reasons from the actual product or from, for from ongoing service reasons? For service and um, let's say contract structure reasons. Right. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. Uh, I think you need to have a partner in place that really understands that uh, this is the way where the future goes to. And mm. um, you know, it's if you compare to the automotive, the um, the idea of mobility in the future is not a three-liter car. Mm -hmm. yeah? It's a different way of mobility in the future. And that has been a bit the, the issue in, in that component part that we picked a partner that uh, did not have a business strategy in a digital world. It has been a partner that has a digital strategy. Right. And that's a, co a completely different thing. Right. Yeah. Right. So right. they did not understand into which direction we are going. Yeah. Yeah. And in terms of uh, any support for particular reasons that you yeah. may need, because typically you, um, need, you need a lot of support. You need. Um, and, and given that you don't have any people on property. Yeah, it has to work. Yeah, so yeah. how's that dynamic? Yeah, well, you learn step by step those things, right? So yeah. we opened with a really heavy Wi-Fi um, that has been delivered by Deutsche Telekom mm -hmm. and then the cloud took over and distributed in the system. A lot of uh, capacity we've bought with Deutsche Telekom, but on a Friday they had a breakdown and we called them and they said, well, we will fix it on Monday. So that's really the worst case for a digital hotel. Right? Yeah. So we called uh, another Wi-Fi provider and they fixed it within a couple of hours and we had a backup yeah. and moved over to, uh, to that primary partner and that uh, from that day on only Deutsche Telekom as a backup. Mm -hmm. So that's an um, example uh, how it works. So if, if it's really 
if technology is core of your business, you really have to have a, a second solution in your hands. Exactly, yeah. redundancy in place. Exactly. So did you did you um, open the property with those redundancies already in place, or was that something you learned as you went along? In parts we learned, mm -hmm. but of course when we shaped the whole architecture, we we already had a couple of those ideas in place. So mm -hmm. um, we anticipated that we have to be able to help out our guests whenever and wherever. So for example, I sat on Tenerife uh, during my holidays, somebody called and I brought him into his room as the app had an issue. So what is the information behind that? You need to have a system that is completely in the cloud. You can't use a server-based property management system if, if your stuff is not on property. Mm, so yeah. a part of those decisions have been made uh, very strategically and beforehand and thought over. But a couple of that decisions like the, the let's say, Wi-Fi cable that comes into the building has been realized that we really need to have a backup whilst the hotel was running. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I'd like to focus just a little bit more on um, the earlier stages of the guests' experience. Yeah. Um, they're making the reservation, yeah. depending on which channel it came through. Yeah. Uh, talk me through the the, the reservation um, input. Like how, given you have no reservationists mm. to actually physically put mm. the, the, the reservations into the PMS, what's the automation there? How does that work? Well, you need to have um, an architecture that really works seamlessly. So, um, of course, um, the, the OTAs do the authorization of the credit cards. They pick the money for us and we receive a via transfer once a month. Okay. Um, so, guests prepay prior to arrival in full? Um, look, that's, that's an important Thing or an important change in, in the mind of the, the person who is building up that system, you can't keep to that processes the hospitality has learned over centuries that somebody reserves or and then arrives and then at the end of his arrival pays. So if you really want to work disruptive, you have to change the processes. So we request the authorization of the credit card and if somebody doesn't give that, he's not our guest. So the person who wants to sleep with us needs to give us the possibility to collect the money without a reception, without signing. So we need a full authorization and we clear that credit card the moment he arrives. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's the first step. Then all the processes need to be seamless. We have a channel manager that brings the booking into the PMS. The PMS needs to correspond with the application for the keyless room entry. The keyless room entry app needs to correspond with the locking devices. Um, of course it has to give the information back into the PMS the moment the guest has arrived. We also need to get the information back whenever the guest leaves in order to kick off the, the invoice. Mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. If everything goes smoothly and is well linked one to the other and everything works fine, the process is more or less stuffless. Okay. Yeah. And how do you manage your inventory through the channel manager then if, if um, there's no one to do it and you want to manage your seasons, for example, yeah. how do you do that? Well, our money is made in revenue management. So we have one person uh, who really takes care of the rates okay. minute by minute, day by day. Okay. So for that you actually yeah. do have a body. Exactly. Okay. So that person who, who is responsible for the property, she does um, on spot checks the, the quality of the hotel. So cleanliness is analog, it's not digital. So you need to have someone here who checks that the bathrooms are in perfect shapes yeah. Um, yeah. and the rest of the day she manages the rates. Right, right. Yeah. Okay, so um, the, the housekeeping components are all outsourced yeah. obviously. Yeah, yeah. also F&B. Yeah. yeah. So okay. we do not want to, to make any F&B operation. No. no, fair enough. Okay, and for concept in the future, I mean this is the first 
hotel of yeah. of your idea, mm -hmm. of your concept. Yeah. Um, what's the future look like for you? Well, we currently have three hotels under construction and we'll take over uh, within the next three months two additional hotels. So, um, um, mid of 2019 it will add to six hotels. Of course, the quality, the look and feel and what we are doing on the technology side has to uh, get better and uh, evolve and you know go on to the next step. So we have a, a I think we are ahead of our concept uh, regards to the technology. So there are a couple of other brands who discuss that they are also uh, quite digital, but our idea is not to be digital. Our idea is to use digitalization mm. in order to do hospitality in another way. Yeah. And that needs to go more and more into that direction. Yeah, so yeah. we want to bring more interesting, intelligent products into the market, more downtown hotels, more uh, outstanding designed products that have a, a huge digital uh, aspect, but that are an alternative to the big S brands. Yeah, yeah. And the other properties that you, you're opening, are they here in Germany or are they throughout Europe? Well, we had a very strategic um, development idea. So we said we want to do the five closest and most important cities. So Düsseldorf, Köln, Bonn, Essen, Aachen. Okay. And then we do capitals, German speaking. Mm -hmm. What is Bern, mm -hmm. Wien mm -hmm. and Berlin. And after that we do the rest of 100,000 plus cities okay. and that exactly will be the the way we are going yeah yeah so you've got some big plans yeah that's great that's great which means you're going to have to have automated systems that will be able to scale with you well that's exactly the point you know when we are talking about um hotels that digitalize their guest directory mm. they can't scale that mm. Mm. you know and then um, a digital strategy is a complete different thing to business strategy in the digital world. We have that business strategy, we can scale mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's not a big, big thing to open hotels. No. So we just need the, the property, we need an idea what we fill into that property and then we scale it, yeah. full stop. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Martin, thank you so much for being on the show. It's been great to have Thanks. you. Thank you very much. Cheers. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoyed that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then the bell next to it for your notifications. And until next time, we'll see you then.